Don't. Good morning. Good morning. What blew you in? <laughs> that was quite a storm last night, wasn't it? Wow. Uh, we, we, in fact, we were going to have worship outside, where at least we were thinking about that, if you might recall that. But uh, yesterday when I saw the weather report, we might have been able to do it, but we might not have, so we decided to stay inside. Hope that was a good decision for now. We will hopefully be outside next week for our, uh, our barbecue, our, our, our 3 p.m. barbecue next Sunday. So hope you can attend that. We have some good things planned. Today, I think, is the 13th. Yes, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we're nearing the end of our series on the lesser known but important Old Testament Bible people. Today, we're looking at um, a man named Urias. Uriah, excuse me, Uriah the Hittite. Sometimes it's Urias. It's uh, interesting, actually. Stanley pointed this out to me, and I'd forgotten this. Um, when in the, uh, in the New Testament, when they have the, um, the lineage of Jesus, when they say so-and-so begat such-and-such and who and ha whatever, um, Bathsheba's mentioned, but not by name. And it goes like, let's see if I can find that real quick. All right, Boaz, Boaz, yep, here we go. Jesse was the father of King David, and David was the father of Solomon by, Ur by the wife of Uriah. So isn't that interesting? She's not actually mentioned by name, but rather by her previous husband. Isn't that interesting? And I think that makes a point that we'll kind of bring up in the message today as well. Uh, today is a service of healing, and our liturgy is, uh, is from a, a, a book, uh, a liturgy that what is for healing. It has a, a number of, of uh, pieces of music, but the tunes are very familiar, so they'll be easy to, that should be pretty easy to follow along until we get to the hymn of the day, uh, which is hymn number 801. I'll suggest you look at that right now, 801. It's just a single verse and should be easy to pick up, but um, if, if you can play that first, that verse for us. And then you would just sing those first two lines again at the end as the refrain. Yep. Yeah. 
and then it skips to the end? Yeah, so it's two measures at the end. Two measures at the end. Oh, yeah. we'll follow her. <laughs> okay, it's just for you. Okay, so that should be pretty easy. Just sing out, sing loud, sing proud, and we'll, uh, we'll be able to follow along. Uh, please be praying for, in addition to uh, the other prayers, pray for May Lynn, May Lynn Mickelson. She's in the hot, I think she's still in the hospital as far as we know, Dee. Uh, she's been having trouble with balance and, and, and other things, and they're running tests to see what might be going on. There may be some issues in the, in the brain area, so be praying for May Lynn. Um, that was it? That was your announcement? Sorry for taking it. <laughs> What else? I think. If there's anything else, I'll think of it later. Let's stand. Brothers and sisters, we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, Judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from you and from each other in our thoughts, words, and actions. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience of our brother Jesus, your Son. Forgive us all that is past. Renew us with the power of the Holy Spirit and move us to faithful service in the kingdom of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and trust in him. May he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, lead you to greater faith and obedience, and bring you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And also with you. Let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son lives, gives Himself as the living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of His presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by His risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
Our opening hymn is in your bulletin. Come away with me. The first lesson is, our uh, first reading is from first lesson, uh, Second Samuel chapter 11, verses 5 through 15. The woman, Bathsheba, conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, send me Uriah and Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house, and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house. David said to Uriah, You have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On, on the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening, he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and die. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the second reading is from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12, and it's to be read responsibly. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, 
so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I am more guilty, a sinner when my mother is me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. <clears throat> Let me hear, <clears throat> excuse me, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. I my sins, and blood all my enemies. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And some people were carrying to him a paralyzed man lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, child, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up, and he went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You could be seated. What happened to Uriah the Hittite wasn't his fault. I would say it was completely unfair. And a lot of attention, a lot of attention has been given to King David and to his affair with Bathsheba, both in, in writing down through the centuries and more recently in the cinema. You may have seen these movies, 1951. David was played by Gregory Peck, and Bathsheba was played by Susan Hayward. Do you remember Uriah? Well, in that one, Uriah kind of comes across as a bit of a fool who neglected his wife and her needs. Duty as a soldier above being a husband. He almost set himself up and asked to be put in the hottest part of the battlefront for this, this greater glory. Or 1985, King David is played by, do you remember? Richard Gere. Richard Gere and Alice Krieger. And in that movie, Uriah is completely unlikable. He scorns his wife. He's a foreigner, and they point out he's a Hittite. Uriah the Hittite. Well, in the Bible, there's not much to go on other than what we read today. We do know in another couple places that Uriah was one of what they called one of the 33, the mighty warriors of David. So David, King David's elite soldiers from the beginning, they knew each other. They knew each other well from before the time the king, that, that King David even took the throne. Uriah and Bathsheba lived near the king. That's how he saw her. They lived near the king, and, and the fact that their house was so close tells you that he had a significant place. He was called Uriah the Hittite probably because he descended from a Hittite family, a Canaanite tribe who had long before converted to Judaism. Why didn't Uriah go to his wife? 
Well, you know, during battle and war, it was understood that soldiers, even leaders like Uriah, would abstain from comforts and relationships. It wasn't, it wasn't that Uriah uh, was a cold and distant husband. We don't know that. Instead, the Bible suggests that he was a man of integrity and of faith. And in contrast to King David at that time in his life anyway. If you back up just a few verses from today's first lesson, chapter 11, verse um, one begins the story in kind of a funny way. It says, In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle. <laughs> Almost like a fairy tale, right? In the spring of the year, when kings go out to battle, but it makes this point very clear, but David remained at Jerusalem. So unlike most kings in the spring of the year, where was David? At home. At home. For whatever reason, King David stayed home. He sent his soldiers, including Uriah the Hittite, under the command of Joab. But he, the king, stayed behind. And in his idle time, it says David, David rose from his couch and his eyes and his heart wandered and found Bathsheba. Which sin do you think was held against King David more? Was it his adultery or that he conspired to have Uriah abandoned and killed in battle? He used his power, his deceit. He used people like Joab to carry it out and cover it up. In chapter 12, David was confronted by the prophet Nathan, and in a clever way, he ends up condemning himself. And, then, and through Nathan, God, God said to David, I rescued you from Saul. I gave you his throne and his home, and, and so much more. And this, this is how you answer it? You struck down Uriah with another man's sword and took his wife? Really, his sins were and are seen together. A bit ago, we read from Psalm 51, a psalm of David. And in the heading, if you were to look in your Bible, they often have these headings. In the heading of Psalm 51, it says, To the leader, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. So the psalm we read was David's confession for that. And decades after King David died, 1 Kings 15.5 records a kind of epitaph for David, which reads, David did what was right in the sight of the Lord and did not turn aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. How would you like that in your eulogy? He was a great husband, a great father, and a faithful Christian all his life, except that one time. Do you remember? If David had it to do over again, what would he have done different? If he'd never called for Bathsheba, if she'd never been pregnant with his child. And Uriah wasn't hurt. Well, then there would, there would have been no King Solomon after him. King David's fall was uncovered and recorded in Scripture. He didn't get away with it unscathed. We know what happened. But it amazes me not just that God heard David's confession and knew his heart. Not only was, was God able to forgive David, it's even more amazing that out of that sinful time and that relationship came a lineage. 
that God incorporated David and Bathsheba, wife of Uriah, and eventually their second son Solomon and his descendants after him into his whole ark of salvation. I know that we all have those moments, mistakes that we've made that we wish we could take back or change. At least I do. But we can't. And thank God. I may not have stole anyone's wife or hired a hitman, but what has God me here to this point in my life includes the mistakes and the sins that I've made. It includes my faults, my brokenness, my hurts. I could labor under comparing my life as it is now to how I wish it was, or I can accept it as it is to let God's forgiveness and the way that God includes our mistakes and weaknesses into his work. I, I could let that inform and change how I see myself and how I look at others. You are not condemned by your brokenness or your mistakes. They are part of who you are. They are part of who God loves we too can love the whole person. It isn't that God takes a wrong and makes it right. God takes what is wrong and makes it his. He includes it into the whole plan and story of his creation, our sin and brokenness, his forgiveness, healing, love, promise, and salvation. God did not forget or abandon Uriah the Hittite. His life and his death mattered to God. God saw to it. And God did not leave or abandon Bathsheba or David to his sin. God doesn't do that, not to them and not to us. Today is a day of healing. We pray for healing, not as an escape from it, but out of faith, trusting that God does not and will not abandon us. He does not abandon us to our mistakes, to our sins, or our illnesses, or fears. He doesn't take what is wrong and make it right. He makes it and us his. There is healing Miraculous sometimes, it's amazing and quick signs of God's presence now. And so, or sometimes, no less miraculous, our healing happens many years later through acceptance, incorporation. And some healing will be seen only in the life to come. Complete and full healing in the grace given and embodied by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have not been, nor shall we ever be, abandoned. Not to our sin, brokenness, not to our illness or death, but fully claimed into the life of God. Amen. Let's join in singing hymn number 801.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Oh, singing it. Praise to prayers just to give you a heads up. They'll they they are much like they normally are on a Sunday. We'll get to the point though when we offer up those prayers that are on our hearts and minds. That's when we'll include some of the prayers that you wrote out for us uh, last week on those slips. You can also include um, uh, just names of folks that you're praying for. Then following that, uh, Diana and I will be available up front for anyone who wishes to bring, uh, to come forward and to pray for someone, something. You can pray for your nation, for healing, for uh, just about anything, creation, anything that's on your heart that needs healing yourself, of course. You can ask for prayers for yourself, and uh, we'll pray with you, and then we have some oil that we'll put on your forehead uh, for some anointing. So we will do that. Great God, our healer, by your power, the Lord Jesus healed the sick and gave hope. Hope, bring us comfort in the midst of pain, strengthen to transform us, and light to illuminate our darkness. <clears throat> Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Lord, in your mercy. You are God. Grant to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent your presence. Mend broken relationships and those in emotional distress your serenity of spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering. Grant them wisdom and skill, empathy, and patience. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to the dying a peaceful, holy death, and with your grace strengthen those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken in our lives, in the nation, and in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now, Lord, we offer prayers, the following prayers. For Bob. For Sarah's father, dealing with dementia and lethargy. For Robert. For Rhonda. Shirley for her health, Ronnie from the 4th of July accident. Pray for Bob and for Bill. For Rob. We pray for Kari in treatment for recurrence of a brain tumor. For Tracy, who has a healing from a heart transplant. For Megan. Her heart may be rejecting. For Marjorie, brain surgery. For Jeff, better health. And for Jerry, who has cancer. We pray for Janet, daughter in law's mom for cancer, for Elaine. 
for Garrison, who has um, a brain injury following a boating accident last night. Pray for Dave's brother, Michael. And for Maylin Mickelson, who is in the hospital. Continue with the anointing of oil. You may be seated unless you're coming for. Gracious God, in baptism, you anointed us with the oil of salvation and joined us to the death and resurrection of your son. Bless all who seek your healing presence in their lives and draw us all more deeply into the mystery of your love. Amen. Amen. May the peace and healing of Jesus Christ be with you all. Also with you. I feel like I 
Well, I understand you're a cheerleader, so you probably could do it. All right. Okay. Thank you. A reminder that there is a list of prayer concerns. You, it's great to keep that near you, to pray for folks during the week as well, to include them. I know there are several announcements. We'll just start with Elaine. Yeah, get your notes. Celebrating it in heaven and with us as well. So, thank you. Yes, Diane. Well, we made it through another week. Uh, we did three events. We helped 1,352 kids with backpacks and school supplies. The first one we did folding too. There must have been all of you all know about folding. Uh, probably over 100 sacks of clothes that went out, and there's hardly anything left. It was all taken. Uh, we did, uh, I wrote this down, I can't even read it. Uh, we did 105 uh, shots. We did uh, sports physicals, we did 43. And helmets, we did over 200, we haven't had the count. We buy the helmets and then Wes, Wes Pierce comes and fits at each one of the events. They're really wonderful to us. We're lucky to have them, they love us. And we absolutely love them, we really appreciate it. Now we're here. The good news is that Pierce Transit had a school supply drive, and they decided they could give it to us. Oh, oh wow. So on uh, Tuesday at 3.30, they're going to bring a ton of school supplies to us. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. I believe Carl Carlton's uh, memorial, that's today, am I right? Today at 12.30 at uh, Mountain View Center. It's all in here. Good. Yes, you have one. Go ahead. Yes, this is on behalf of the play. We had our first practice on Tuesday, um, and it's going to be fun. 
<laughs> once we learn all our lines. But anyway, those of you who are in the play, you know who you are. We have practice on this Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. And the, it's a very funny. I think you all are going to love uh, the pr production. And just for the dates, the play will be November 1st, which is a Friday, at Messiah Lutheran in Auburn. And then Saturday, November 2nd, it will be here at Redeemer. And it'll be dinner theater like we always do, and it's very fun. But again, practice is this Tuesday. Right on. Birthdays, and I think that we have our birthday celebration. That's coming up this Thursday, am I right? It's the last Thursday? I missed it, didn't I, completely? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kind of running around without my head lately. Oh, well. But uh, in a couple days, I know that we have Sally's birthday coming up. So uh, we can sing happy birthday both to Lawrence, our custodian, who's not here, but I think it's, it's his 50th, right? So you could send a card to Lawrence if you want to. And Sally's birthday in a couple days. Let's sing to Sally. the giving of our regular tithes, any special offerings, and this offering of music. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Together we remember how in the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this. And as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So remembering the words and teachings of Christ and the promise of this meal, we pray together as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is an open communion table.
invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserve and protect us all until our lives eternal. Amen. Let us pray a post-communion prayer together. <clears throat> Gracious God, here, here at, at this, this table, table we, we have been, been in the company, company of Jesus Christ, Christ our Savior and, and Redeemer. Redeemer. You, you have, have revealed, revealed us loving ways to us in broken bread and poured cup. Now, as your light has illuminated our lives, help us to be a light for others. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in singing from the back of our bulletin, Thy Word.